Alrighty guys, welcome back to another LEGO set review from Brick by Brick, and today we have set number 9444, and this is Cole's Tread Assault, and this was released as part of the 2012 Rise of the Snakes Wave 1, and I didn't get this back when it was out, I actually just recently got this as part of a bulk lot, so you may notice some of the stickers are slightly off, or I think one of these might be placed upside down or something, but I didn't think it matter too much uh, enough to possibly destroy the sticker to reapply it so you're just gonna have to deal with that and I don't have the box or instructions to show you so you won't see that in this review but I did want to take a look and show you guys this set because you know it's been a while maybe some of you guys didn't even know it existed the set did come with two many figures the first of which here is Cole ZX and this is one of the you know more common uh, types of ninja suits appeared in a lot of uh, sets. Cole wasn't the most common of them though, so it was still nice to get him here in a $40 set. Uh, of course, he's not the draw figure, we'll see that in a second, but he did come with his, you know, uh, trademark Scythe of Quakes, and this was just the standard build. I know they varied it up a little bit in a couple of sets that year, but, you know, it looks pretty good still, and I think this holds up pretty nicely. It's definitely a nostalgic design for any Ninjago fans out there. And he does have the ZX mask, which at the time I thought was a little bit uh, strange just for a ninja, but as, you know, time went on, I, you know, grew to like these masks a lot, actually. And, you know, the ZX suit is just really nice, actually. Um, I was never one of my favorite suits back, uh, you know, in the day, but... I, I just like the way that these look, and you know the fact that all of the ninja had slightly different types of armor. The ZX shoulder pads were great, and if you're unfamiliar with how those work, they're able to fit a sword in uh, the back, uh, you know, going this direction, and you can also have one going the other direction as well. So you can fit two swords on the back of the figure. Uh, you know, that was cool. Um, you know, this is a good figure, not an uncommon figure particularly. He appears in a total of five sets exactly like this. I think there was one where he appeared without shoulder pads. So, you know, not uncommon at all, but still a cool figure. And he did have his original Cole face. Scales, though, was a bit more of a draw, as aside from this set, he only otherwise appeared in the $80 Destiny's Bounty. So this was a significantly cheaper way to get him. And, you know, it's a, a cool thing for me, because this is actually the only set that... I have that had a scales figure, uh, so you know I didn't have the original Destiny's bounty. I may get it eventually, but you know I, I don't yet, and it's not super duper high on my priority list. But he did come with the Hypnobrise staff, which did appear in several sets, and you get an extra one of those um, little uh, one by one printed tiles that just attaches on to the staff on a stud, and it was stuck on there pretty well. But you know you can just attach it. And, you know, his uh, torso print is pretty good. He does have the snake tail in dark blue. Uh, the back of the snake tail is a little bit rubbery in design. Uh, so, you know, it can flex up and down a little. And the end of mine is drooping just a little bit. But, you know, it uh, it's not too bad. The printing on the tail is actually really, really opaque. Like, it's brighter than it is on the torso. Which, that that's not too bad. Uh, like, if anything, that's a good thing. But uh, just something I wanted to point out. I guess my figure is a little bit dusty. But, you know, you can pardon that, because uh, it is a pretty old figure. And the back printing on this figure is, you know, pretty good. And the front printing as well. And I just have a really nicely molded head for Scales and Slithra. And, you know, it's got printing all on the top. It would have been maybe cool if there could be some printing on the back, but I don't think there was in the show. So I don't think that's too much of an issue. This is a great figure. And, you know, the Scales is one of the more important Serpentine characters, and probably one of the more recognizable as well, so it's really cool to get him here. He does also come with a dark blue little small snake piece, which actually only appears in this set and the spinner starter set with Cole the X and Rattla, I think. But, you know, it's a relatively uncommon piece and cool to get here, and it is, you know, they did actually have a small hip to buy snakes in the show, so... This represents one of those and gives you a little bit of an extra bad guy to fight. So when this set was released in 2012, it retailed for a total of $39.99 and contained 286 pieces and too many figures. So honestly, just 
like from a numbers point of view, this was kind of a bad looking uh, set value wise, but it does build a pretty s decently sized final model here. Maybe a little bit smaller than what you'd expect for it. I mean, no, this is like the same size, if not a little bit bigger in footprint than the Ninja Charger. It's a little bit lower to the ground, but you know, it's not like just mass wise, it's not too bad. It does have the big wheels and some of these big pieces here, which kind of fill in some of the space. But you know, this is the only one of the Ninja's original elemental vehicles. You know, the side of Quakes would be able to transform it into this in the show. And this is the only one of them that was not remade for the first uh, Legacy Wave in 2019. So, you know, uh, the cool thing here is that I think in terms of external appearance, I think this, you know, holds up pretty well. And the feature holds together pretty well. Uh, it's just a little bit of the build of this feels a little tiny bit fragile. Like these feel like they want to fall off a little bit. Um, but... You'll see why in a second, and you know it's it's just the build is pretty simple it seems, which I guess makes sense for a low piece count. But you know, as far as external details, you have a bunch of these little flaps which can move up and down. Uh, we do have the cockpit in the center, which uh, we can actually fit coal in there pretty decently. And inside, you know, he does have a single one by two printed tile as a control panel, and there are no studs in there. So what you really have to do is you just have to sit them back a little bit and then close this up over them. This sticker, again, you can see is peeling up a little bit, but that's not too big a deal. Uh, but that does have its elemental symbol, and you just close that up. And you'll notice it can rock back and forth a little bit. That's for a feature that we'll take a look at in a second, but you could also just view it as a uh, feature to spin coal around really fast. And yeah, uh, if, if that's what you want to do, do it. Uh, then back here we have some engines with a couple stickers. This engine section is... One of the areas where it feels a little bit uh, lacking, maybe a little simple, um, but also back behind it, there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, but from the very back, we have this one thruster here. You can see a little bit of green, which is kind of ugly. And, you know, from the front, we I, I like the front section of this. I just think that the build here looks really nice. Uh, but we do have this little cannon here, which you can flip up, and then you can shoot off like so. And, you know, that's a nice built-in feature. It does feel nice to have one of these as opposed to the modern spring-loaded shooters, uh, the small ones. This just feels like you have some good power behind it, and I've just always liked uh, the use of these cannons where they don't look too out of place, and you know, this I think looks pretty good. I almost think the vehicle maybe looks better once it's been shot off, but you know, you kind of expect that, But and it is black so it blends in, so no, not too big a deal there. Again, you can see a little bit of green through there, uh, but now, there are two other little play features here, and the first one has to do with that thruster on the back of uh, the engine. Uh, so, if we push that in, it'll push that forward and it'll launch all of these little blades out. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that that's kind of a cool looking, menacing, intimidating attack feature pose. And, you know, to reset it, all you do is push all of those down. Uh, you could leave these back up if you wanted to. Uh, they will, you know, push themselves up as they go forward. But that's the one section that I think maybe looks better if you just keep that up all the time. But you can do either. It'll work. And, I don't know, I, I just think this feature works well. Unlike the J Stormfighter, uh, the rubber bands in here are not permanently stretched. You know, they actually want to stay unstretched like that. Uh, so they don't just wear out immediately. Uh, that was one of the biggest problems with this wave of sets was the uh, Jay Storm Fighter, you know, would destroy itself. But this feature works really well and, you know, still holds up today. So, you know, that's good. And the other play feature is, you know, if you are driving and you hit a wall and, you know, don't know what to do and, you know, maybe you're behind enemy lines, you can flip your whole vehicle over and make it look ugly, but it's green, so it blends in with the snakes. And, yeah, I don't know if I agree with this. This had no backing in the show. And I almost feel like this detracts from the model, because it makes you have all these green, ugly pieces that you can sometimes see from the top. And this mode doesn't look all that great, but for play, it is okay. It would have been nice if they could have actually made this look good, but, you know, they wanted to dedicate a majority of the pieces to the actual 
earth or tread assault um, you know, side of the vehicle. So uh, I'm not too mad about it, but you know it would have been nice if you know maybe this didn't exist. But again, you know this is a nice little simple bonus feature, and I do like the fact that this swivels around so perfectly. Like it's a pretty seamless tran or seamless transformation. You know, just flipping that over. So you know it's good, but not my favorite. Maybe if they could have just figured out a way to cover up the green from this angle here. Uh, the lighting prevents you guys from seeing it, but I can see it here in person. Let's see if I can move the light so you guys can see. Yeah, like that. You can see some angles like that uh, throughout the model. And that's the only thing that kind of bothers me a little bit. There's also a little bit gappy in here in the center. Uh, but from like a side angle like this, I think that the model is really solid. So overall, I think that this set is pretty good for, you know, a 2012 Ninjago set. I do think that you know, it, this would look nice with all of the 2019 Legacy Elemental vehicles, and it's not too, too expensive on Bricklink. You can get a used version for, like, 30 bucks, which is not bad, especially for, you know, it being a retired set with a relatively uncommon figure. Uh, but, you know, again, that is used condition. New, brand new sealed sets go for, like, 50-ish. Uh, which, again, not too bad if you're looking really to pick one of these up. I don't think it's a must go out of your way and get this. But, you know, if you watch this review and you thought it was kind of cool and you want it, it's not too hard to get your hands on. So that's a good thing. Uh, one thing, you know, that I didn't mention before is that there's no place to store a cold weapon inside here, which maybe would have been nice since, you know, this transforms into the weapon or uh, the weapon transforms into this, maybe it would have been nice if there was a little clip somewhere. And that's something that they've been doing a lot more with more recent sets, but back in 2012, that wasn't a, you know, every set has a clip for weapons. So, you know, you can kind of forgive it a little bit. But I do think there was, you know, definitely space for that. They could have just thrown a little clip down here in the back of this serpentine thing, or, you know, underneath this. I think they definitely could have fit one in, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to not get too many points for that. I just thought that was one other thing to bring up before the end of the video. But, yeah, it's a pretty decent, solid model. Uh, not one of my favorite Ninjago sets of all time, but, you know, I'm definitely happy to finally have this, and, you know, I'll definitely end up uh, holding on to it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye, everyone.